the Prime Minister has his target as well. One of his five pledges was to halve inflation uh, by the end of the mm. year. That doesn't look on mm. track. And the Bank of England isn't helping him out. So at what point does the government step in? We had the Transport Secretary on Sophie Ridge's programme last night here on Sky News saying that, look, you know, the Bank of England didn't see it coming. Rishi Sunak, back when his was he was Chancellor, was saying that inflation is a priority. The Bank of England at that time was saying inflation's only temporary. You know, let's not overreact. Well, look, the, the, you know, the Prime Minister, of course, has a huge wealth of uh, experience from his time as uh, Chancellor. Uh, as you say, he cautioned about the implications uh, of inflation, which is why we have been so determined not to do the things that drive up inflation. And that's in stark contrast with what we see from the Labour Party, who are talking about uh, uh, inflation-busting pay rises driven by their union paymasters. It's, uh, we hear them talking about huge, huge, huge sums of additional borrowing, which would inevitably push up interest rates even further. Our viewers this morning questioning, when you say, look, if we need to go and support people's mortgages, we'd have to go on a big borrowing spree to find that money. In this instance for Ukraine, you have found, as Susanna said, £4.6 billion, another £240 million, because it's essential, as you're saying, for everybody, that you need to find that money. When you've needed to find the money for that, why can't you find the money for people who are on the verge of losing their homes? So, I, so we, have, um, we have supported people. I remind viewers, of course, that uh, during uh, the COVID situation, during the COVID uh, pandemic, uh, we put the furlough scheme in place. We supported yeah. people who uh, couldn't go to work because of the uh, restrictions. So, of course, we look to uh, support people, but we and this, also we, need to make them, sure that For them that we right are now, and they're on the verge of the losing right their decisions. homes, they need that sort of support now. Our colleague, Martin Lewis, who I'm sure you are very aware of, certainly the Chancellor is, said six months ago on this programme, we are heading for a time bomb, a mortgage time bomb. The time bomb's gone off. So the Prime Minister is okay. absolutely right on that commitment, and we are yeah. still is his, focused is his on that commitment. And he, and he must be, he must be extremely frustrated that he's not getting what he wants. And it seems the Bank of England isn't helping him achieve that target. Should the bank be doing more? We've got Adam uh, Posen in the Telegraph today saying that banks should be going further and creating a recession. What do you think about that? Is the recession the answer to busting inflation? Is this now the best, worst option to get the country out of this mess? No, what we need to do is we need to grow the economy. High interest rates don't uh, help with that. This idea that, um, uh, you know, that we should consciously be going into a uh, recession, uh, I don't think is one that uh, anyone in government would be comfortable subscribing to at all. What we want to do is we want to drive productivity. This is why the, uh, the Prime Minister is taking both the immediate uh, measures and also the long-term measures, uh, his commitment to maths, uh, lifelong learning, a uh, higher skilled uh, workforce. These things will increase productivity. Yeah. That will help grow the economy. That will help halve interest rates as we have uh, committed to do. We are relentlessly focused on getting a grip of these global economic challenges. And of course, we're seeing yeah, interest rates. Yeah, and you just said that high interest uh, rates don't help. So that's an interesting comment to world. make in light of what's going to happen with the Bank of England today. You're saying high interest rates don't help what which the government's is why, trying to achieve. Which is why which is why the Prime Minister, the government as a whole, is committed to driving down those interest rates. Some of the people listening, Foreign Secretary, will hear 2.4 billion going to Ukraine, and they're bracing themselves for an increase in their mortgage rates here. Of course, we have the safety of living in the United Kingdom. We're not living in a country such as Ukraine. But they might look at rather mixed financial messages. How would you respond? Well, look, it is, as I say, it is in our interest that we bring this war to an end. This war... Russia's brutal invasion of Ukraine is in very large part the reason why we are seeing uh, increased prices, why people in the UK are finding it harder to uh, to pay uh, their their bills and uh, afford their uh, shopping. And their mortgages, uh, so, Foreign Secretary? And, uh, yeah, and their mortgages. So it is driving... Just explain the rationale behind that, if you would, Mr Cleverly. So, so the, uh, the instability that is creating in global markets, global energy markets, global food markets, it's creating inflationary pressure across the globe. And underline that. Um, just a, a final point. Um, mm. You were missing on Monday uh, for that vote on the Privileges Committee 
report, you didn't vote. Why didn't you? And if you had been there, how mm. would you have voted? Well, look, uh, the sad truth is being the Foreign Secretary, and I can't remember exactly what was in my diary at that point in time, uh, but because I uh, travel a lot and because I have a lot of commitments with the international community uh, here in the UK, it is often the case that I miss votes. OK, a lot of people are saying it's quite funny that the, the Prime Foreign Minister, on the this... Foreign Secretary, the Home Secretary and the Chancellor were all really busy on that Monday. A lot of people say it's quite convenient. And, you know, well, also, these the are the four is, great offices of state Sarah not Jane, turning up for a really point. important vote about democracy and truth. How would you have voted? The point is, to a large extent, that vote was a moot point. It was about the sanctions on a person who had, at that point, already stood down as a, uh, as a member of Parliament. Now, uh, the Leader of the House made it very clear uh, that uh, we respect the work of the Privileges Committee. Ultimately... Then why didn't I mean, you, you turn up to vote? Positions, it is was, your friendship it was... with Boris Johnson so more I'm, important I'm ex... than standing up for the democratic process? You know, the Privileges Committee so, found that former Prime Minister... So, Sarah Jane, I was in That's the middle serious. of answers. I was in the middle of answering. Um, I, was, I was literally in the middle of answering when you cut me off. One of the issues of why the war kicked off, of course, was Russia's great fear that Ukraine would be part of NATO. Uh, what support have you got for this move in saying, yeah, we want them as a member of NATO? Well, the irony of Putin's uh, invasion of Ukraine was it triggered both Finland and Sweden to apply to join NATO. And these were two countries who for decades had not uh, looked to join NATO. Uh, countries join NATO to defend themselves. NATO is a purely defensive alliance and Russia's, in, uh, Russia's uh, illegal, unprecedented, unjustifiable invasion uh, of Ukraine stimulated a number of countries to apply to uh, join NATO. NATO, back in Bucharest, uh, over a decade ago, made the commitment that Ukraine uh, was on a pathway to membership. We've seen Ukraine uh, do an incredible job on the battlefield, revolutionise uh, how they operate, modernise very, very quickly. Mm. And that will inevitably mean their journey to NATO membership will be quicker than it might otherwise have been. The point that, uh, so the point that you've made where you're highlighting government positions, this was a free vote. This was house business. It's not government business. It's not whipped. And it's down to uh, uh, individuals, as I say. Uh, the Leader of the House said how important uh, the work of the Privileges Committee was. As I say, I felt to a large extent the vote was a, uh, a moot point because the person involved had uh, left the House um, and therefore on the it, I didn't prioritise the it against the other work that I was going to do. OK, James Cudley, Foreign The principle Secretary, was uh, I have a job to do as far. OK, all right, your job took precedence. Uh, OK.